today is a Monday. A lot of us will experience this phenomenon called Monday blues. I'm going to give you ideas to break it. Go to your office, go to your most favorite friend, best friend, most silliest friend. We all have that one person. Go and sit next to them and play a silly game which you used to play as a kid. For me, it was pen fighting. Pen fighting was just fighting with a pen. It's as simple as that. Okay, uh, we used to play book cricket. We used to play hand cricket. We used to play a lot of silly games. Try playing a silly game. It's fun. And the second idea I can give you is go to YouTube, search the oldest show that you used to enjoy as a kid. For me, it was Tom and Jerry, Dexter the Laborator, Powerpuff Girls, Hatim, Shakti Man. I used to enjoy all these shows because I was a 90s kid. Whichever show you enjoyed as a kid, watch that. And the third thing and the most important thing I can give you is after you're okay, after you're fine about a Monday, just sit back and think, why are you irritated about a Monday? Walk with me. As I was walking yesterday, I realized this, that we don't understand how complex and beautiful our human body is. And we don't understand the importance of physical fitness, especially in today's time and age. I'll tell you why. The food that we eat, no matter how healthy your food option is, a lot of chemicals are poured into it even before it is grown. The water that we drink, the tasty the water that removes a lot of dirt, the reverse osmosis water that we all drink, also removes a lot of essential minerals. And the air that we breathe, my God, is so polluted and it is getting worse by the day. It is not getting any better. And our previous generation had it better. Their food was better, water was better, air was purer. And that's why they lasted so long. And their physical activity was also a lot more than what we did. We are getting lazier by the day. Our food is getting more poisonous by the day. Our air is getting more poisonous by the day. And we are becoming lazier by the day. If we continue, we won't last half as many years as our previous generation. I want you to ask yourself this. Am I doing enough for my body? Am I doing enough for myself? The eighth episode of Walk With Me. The other day I was on a grocery store buying milk or something. An old BBMP worker was doing what he was doing. A Northeastern lady walks by, hands this man 50 rupees and walks away. This man receives it. He thanks God and then he is continuing doing what he was doing. I was like, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful random act of kindness. I ran to her. And I said, ma'am, sorry to disturb you, but may I know what made you do this? She said, nothing. This man looks like my dad and I thought I'll just give it. That's beautiful. If you think about it, we are all products of random acts of kindness. It could be a person who suggested a certain meal to you. It could be a person who helped you choose a bus when you were lost, choose a route when you did not find, uh, gave you water, gave you a little bit of money when you couldn't find change. These are all very small random acts of kindness. When was the last time you experienced it? I want to know. Sort of walk with me. The kind of responses that I got yesterday was just... One such response was of my friend Sapna. She was on her way somewhere. An old man asked her for a route. She didn't know where it was. But she made an effort. She searched. And then she guided him. Something so simple yet so elegant. Another story of my friend Avantika. Her friend was lost in a city. He didn't know. He didn't know anybody. He didn't know the language. And his purse was robbed. He was pickpocketed and uh, he didn't know anybody. He didn't know the language. He didn't do any. He didn't know anything. At that time, a stranger sees him restless. He approaches him, asks him what is the problem, and then he explains. So the stranger gets him a ticket back to his hometown. When he asked for his contact detail, he said, "Don't give me anything. Just return the favor. Help someone else." Such amazing stories. I want you guys also to be a part of this. I'm going to put up a question. What is the random act of kindness you did or experienced? Let's see the responses we get. This one is a very special episode because I have with me Rohit Saraswati. Hi. This guy has traveled in his bike across India. Okay. For uh, 10,500 kilometers in 21 days and covered across 12,500 students in 8 months, inspiring them in goal setting and also, the most importantly, is climb the Mount Everest, not once, but twice. Why, man? <laughs> so, I wanted to find the purpose of me coming to this planet, so, which is why I did this one. And how did you do it? Uh, hitchhiking all the way from Bangalore to Kathmandu, 12, you know, 3,100 kilometers without spending even a single penny. And post which I went on to go and climb the Mount Everest, which made me realize there lies a humongous amount of energy inside each one of us, with which we can bring in any kind of dream that we conceive in the mind into reality. Yeah, you saw a couple of incidents, no? You were talking to me. Uh, yes. So a person died right in front of my eyes uh, because 
he was attacked by AMS which is called as acute mountain sickness and there was a severe snowstorm which was first of its kind in the last 16 years when the wind was gushing at 155 km per hour and where the temperature was minus 38 degree this dude from China he just took out his spectacles to pose for a photograph mm. guess what happened he lost his eyes right in front of my eyes so that made me realize you know that you can still you know push yourself forward uh, despite having all the you know hurdles that are coming in your way and that's how you become stronger and stronger and you know you can keep going there's something about the mountain you told me yeah see i was completely exhausted uh, when i was on the trekking trail four days in a row the blood was oozing out of my nose and uh, for taking one step at a time i was taking five complete breaths and you know you know leave out uh, for taking one step at a time i used to breathe in and breathe out for five consecutive times yeah. literally i could count my own steps so i was exhausted completely kilometers ahead of me there was nobody kilometers behind me there was nobody i was completely shattered so that's when i looked up to the mountains so that is when the mother mountain started talking to me and she said of all the body parts that are there in your body from tip to toe i can pinpoint those areas in which you are undergoing the extreme pain you don't give up on this journey i am with you come on get up take one step at a time come on take one step at a time so the mountain itself came to my rescue when i thought you know there was nobody to help me out so which is what i learned from you know paulo coelho who has penned on this book called as alchemist so he says when you want something so badly the whole universe will conspire it to give it to you idi bhumandalane namge hullin aaske huvin aaske has kodate nam hatana bidira idre anta so which is exactly true the whole universe will come to your help unless and until you don't want to give up on your journey so that's it that's a tremendous story uh, that you can begin your friday with you don't need to climb the mount everest what do you say rohit yeah absolutely you i i don't want you to go you know climb the actual mount everest but you go climb your own everest climb your own everest if you don't know what your everest is find what it is yeah. if it is difficult that goal will tell you where to reach man yeah. this is a crazy story <laughs> what is your mountain yeah. today is a saturday a lot of us will have 101 ways of beating our first team i have followed this rule called 70 30 70% of my free time i chill doing whatever i like 70% i chill 30% i invest in something that i really care about i am passionate about environment i am passionate about child issues i am passionate about human beings being a better version of their own self what is that one thing that you care about invest your time and resources in it it could be theater it could be music it could be a comedy thing that you are doing it could be a blog that you are writing invest your 30% of your time and resources in it and don't pretend to care about something a lot of people don't care about a lot of things which is okay don't pretend to care about it like for example a lot of people grow dogs and when the dogs grow old they put them to sleep which is a horrible thing to do don't pretend to care about something think about that one thing that you are actually passionate about pick that up and invest your 20% or 30% of your time in it between me and my friend were interacting the other day about love and relationships and i just realized that boss we don't hear genuine love stories anymore the kind of love stories that survived across generations the kind of love stories that fought with so many people just to end up together we don't hear those anymore rather we take up a relationship dissect it nicely into multiple parts and say this part of my relationship i'm going to be with you i'm just going to be physical with you i'm just going to have a, a very uh, chill relationship with you i'm just going to be friends with you why are we having tags to relationships we as human beings have survived world war 1 world war 2 so many natural calamities because we survived it together because we as human beings are bound to share unconditional love the kind of love that has no tags the kind of love that has no boundaries you know what relationships have boundaries business relationships a certain degree of detachment is good but how much is too much have we become businessmen with love and relationships Sort of walk with me a couple of years ago when I used to come back from school. I used to enjoy watching a little bit of TV because there was no internet, YouTube, anything like that. The problem is my sister also came back from school in the very same time, and she would want to watch her own channel. So we used to keep fighting for the remote control. After a point of time, we got two remote controls. Did the problem stop? No. We both started flicking channels in the same time, and TV just got spoiled. <laughs> this analogy got me thinking that boss, we are much like this TV. letting others control what channel has to be played on us 
if that person makes you angry we get angry if that may person makes you sad we get sad if that person makes you jealous you get jealous if the person makes you happy we are happy with other person makes it sad we said we're continuously flicking emotions because of someone outside us a tv does not have brain we have brain the tv cannot control what it plays i can control what i play still why is my remote control with someone else yeah, i got wonderful responses yesterday one of the very interesting ones was what about the things that are not in our control what about the things that we cannot control and it's outside us for that i want to give a beautiful example with sadguru gave and it just blew my mind okay where do you see me in front of you yeah what if i told you it's wrong Okay. there's light that is traveling from behind you and then there is light that is from your phone that is reflecting in your eyes and which is an inverted image you know the whole drill so now tell me where do you see me inside you where do you hear me inside you where do you experience the sound inside you where do you experience earthquake where do you experience rain where do you experience every single experience that happens to you in life inside you so have you ever experienced anything that is outside you no right if there is nothing that you have experienced outside you how can anything anything can control what do you feel